After adopting his first dog in 2006 from Australia, Husnell simply could not stop himself from adopting more. This pet lover went from owning a small band of cats to collecting over 35 pets in his home, a majority of whom are of the Saluki dog breed. Salukis are an ancient sight hound, so they're actually supposed to be from the Middle East. But of course there are people saying that they could be uh, from the East, as in like uh, Central Asia. And there are people saying that they could be as from North Africa. But at the end of the day, uh, they're an ancient sight hound and uh, Westerners have always come up with all these different names of, of all these dogs. Uh, so there's registered ones would be like Saluki. And I know when people talk about Saluki, they'll be thinking it's a Persian Greyhound. I actually got to know about them as early when I was in secondary school. Um, rather than reading about chemistry and physics, I was intrigued by nomadic people. And I realized that most of these nomadic people were Muslims. About 80% to 90% are from Central Asia up to West Africa. And I've always realized they've got this skinny dog. But I, I was like in my teens, probably 16, 15. I wasn't really bothered so much. But I was very intrigued. Muslims having dogs and stuff like that. It was, it was, it was interesting for me, but I didn't really dwell to, to that. I mean, when you, when you come from a society where dogs are a bit of a taboo thing, so we just left it as it was. So I became a veterinarian. I decided to actually have dogs of my own to actually, actually feel how it is to be a dog owner. I saw this documentary on, by Natural Geographic. And you've got this Bedouin praying in the desert and you've got this beautiful, elegant looking dog. And I was just thinking, is this the skinny dog I was actually reading about long, long time ago, like 20 odd years ago? And that's when it intrigued me to go find out more about this breed. I like prefer to be an independent person with an independent kind of dog. Uh, because of my athletic lifestyle, I like a running dog, so I can't actually I'm not fond of, of a dog with short legs and stuff like that. <laughs> so an athletic dog, a fit dog, and also an independent dog. And I realized this is just specially meant for me. When I had my first Saluki, I was absolutely fascinated by it. In fact, I was smelling it every day because I could not believe it didn't smell. And that's how I got from one to another. And I guess I, I went into this so-called crazy phase, I want another one. And that's how I got the second one. And I want another one, I got the third one. Um, so, but we have all in all five uh, in the year 2007, 2008, until we, we got our first litter in 2008. Yeah. From the experience I've had them since 2006, you normally have to wake them up for the morning run. Um, so what I'll do is basically I sort out myself first. Um, then eventually we sort out the Salukis to get into the truck. I don't have two, I don't have three, I've got all in all 14 currently. So they all go into the truck, all 14, I'll go up the hills. Then we start our little morning stroll before we actually go for our nine kilometer walk, uh, nine kilometer jog. They're routine animals, so that's the difference between a cat and them. They're still dogs, so they're so routinized that they know that after the jog, I'm going back to the truck. It's hot. <laughs> While no one has ever directly attacked Hasnul or questioned his faith as a dog owner, he did have a few bumps. After adopting his first dog in 2006, Hasnul reported that children in the neighborhood threw stones through the fence and onto his yard, leading him to build a concrete fence. I had my German short head pointers. It was a nightmare for a while, uh, but I wouldn't want to touch on that. But we, ha we, have, we still have the same neighbors, Alhamdulillah. Uh, they're, they're all fine, we smile at one another, uh, the kids come to the house and the kids actually touch the dogs. But I always tell them, please wash your hands after touching any animal. But probably because I'm a veterinarian, I seem to escape a lot of those uh, probably um, nasty looks or whatsoever. But another reason, probably because I walk a pack, no one dares to actually come up to me and tick me off. But at the end of the day, I'm glad having Salukis. Uh, I live in a very Muslim neighborhood. I, I assume people today are very, very, uh, they have access, the accessibility to the internet is there. I've got a signboard on my, outside my house saying security, Saluki security. The dark situation in this country is always very sensitive, but I always feel that 
for a person to actually go, f I mean, you don't, most people here, they tend to touch on the surface. I realized that thanks to the Seleucus, I've gone deeper and I always encourage people to actually go deeper and find out more. And you find that there's a lot of things that a lot of people are ignorant about. We have always grow, uh, brought up not to have dogs in the house. But at the end of the day, I've actually asked a number of religious scholars. I've spoken to people in the Middle East who are Muslims, uh, who are actually practicing Muslims, who actually have dogs, who have Salukis, what they do. Because I'm not one of those who is just going to listen to just one person. I always feel, as what my Arabic teacher told me, if you're unsure, ask a good person who is a scholar. If you're still unsure, ask another. If you're still unsure, ask another. So I've done that and I've realized that people just need to know more. I'm not a person who is best to comment on religious issues, but I'm willing to learn. And I have to thank my Sulukis because, because I wouldn't say because of them 100%, but they've actually triggered me off to go back to religion, deeper into religion. Yeah, it's a bit odd, isn't it? <laughs>